bumper or balloon? What do you have on your tube and why should you know what you have? Um, in this video, I'm going to be explaining the differences between tube internal retention devices for G-tubes. So if this topic interests you, keep watching. So something has to keep your tube inside your body, otherwise it could just fall out. Um, so that's why every G-tube has something on the inside of the body that's holding it in place. Now there are some rare exceptions to this. There are some tubes that are sutured in place, so they're stitched and they actually don't have an internal retention. There's also sometimes um, use of actually what's a chest tube that's called a pigtail catheter that sort of has a curl on the end of the tube that keeps it in place. But for this video, I'm just gonna be talking about um, tubes that are specifically designed for tube feeding. Um, and they always should have something on the inside to keep it in your body. This one here is a bumper design. So it's a basically a flexible piece of plastic um, that would stop the tube from being able to be pulled, easily pulled out of the, out of the stoma. Um, it's just a yeah, soft, flexible piece of plastic. There's also always something on the outside of the body which stops the tube from going in and gives it some support. Um, so I'll show you a few um, tubes actually in a body in a moment. This here is a balloon retention feeding tube. So see how there's this little plastic filled balloon on the end of the tube. That's keeping, that would be keeping this tube in a person's body and it's inflated with water and um, yeah, it just creates basically a stopper so that you couldn't uh, easily have this tube get pulled out. So, uh, I thought I'd first show you kind of what it would look like in a person's body. So this is an example of, um, I basically made these sponges with a colleague so that we could demonstrate more easily to people what a tube looks like inside a person's body. So this would be the outside of the body with the external bumper that stops it from the tube from moving inwards. And then on the inside of the body, this was meant to re represent the stomach lining and this sort of section here would be representing the abdominal wall. Um, you can see that this is what the bumper would look like on the inside of the body. And you may be wondering, okay, so if my tube has a bumper, how does this tube ever get removed? And actually these tubes are designed to just be simply pulled. Um, this tube, this um, internal bumper is actually flexible enough that if you pull hard enough on the outside of the body, this whole bumper will squeeze through the stoma and come out. So that's kind of um, one thing that to be aware of is that if you have a tube with a bumper, um, probably the way it's going to come out is simply by traction removal, which means pulling. Um, and that could be maybe perceived as a downside of this type of tube when it does come, to come time to be removed. It's a bit less comfortable, obviously, to have this kind of pass through the stoma. It's over with quick. So you probably are wondering, oh boy, what do I have? Do I have a bumper or do I have a balloon? And the easiest way to know is if you look at your tube, you will know whether or not you have a um, balloon or a bumper based on the ports. It's on the other end of the tube. So one of these has a balloon port for filling up the balloon. If you have this on your tube, then you have a balloon. If you don't have it, like this tube, these are just ports that go, that go down for feeding or flushing. Um, there is no balloon port on this tube. Therefore, this tube would not have a balloon on the end. It's an example of a bumper tube. Whereas this one, it has a balloon port. And so, yep, yeah, there's that water-filled balloon. So let's talk about the balloon tubes a bit more. Um, this is, uh, actually I'll show you this one. Um, this here is what it would look like in the body, but I haven't filled up this balloon yet. I thought I'd do that on camera so that you guys can see how that works. So if you see this balloon port right here, it'll always be labeled and it'll actually say the volume of water that should go in this, in the, in the balloon to make it the correct uh, size. So we attach a syringe. This should be um, sterile water, at least distilled water. It could be tap water if that's all you have, but um, generally we would recommend sterile water be used for this purpose. And I'll just make sure you can see the balloon as I do this. So as I put water in, you will see the balloon filling up. There you go. I got a bit of air in there, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so here we are 
with the balloon as the internal retention device. Now it's nice and filled. This is not going to be a tube that could easily move around or be pulled out. That's not to say it's impossible for a balloon tube to be pulled out. It certainly can. There is flexibility here. So if somebody were to accidentally snag their tube on something or pull it really, really hard, could still make it through the stoma. Um, but yeah, essentially that's how that works. So you might be curious, um, how did the water get down here? <laughs> and I thought I'd show you a cross section of a, of a tube so that you could see. All right, hopefully you can see right there, that tiny little hole in this plastic section that's sort of filled on the, in the top section of this tube. That little tiny hole, that is where the water tract goes down all the way through the tube. It's like that from where you fill it up. So water flows down and then into that balloon to fill up the balloon. One last thing I thought I'd mention is um, sometimes these balloons break. So this is actually an example of a, a tube with a broken balloon. And um, the balloon can break for a variety of reasons. Like if you don't change your tube often enough, it could break um, because of just wear, like breakdown because of the stomach acids of the balloon. Um, so that uh, usually we recommend that these tubes are changed on a regular basis to prevent that from happening. Another thing could be overfilling the balloon that could cause it to pop. Um, yeah, so some people, I, I also, in my experience, I really think that there are some people with really strong stomach acid or for some reason they, they wear through those balloons more quickly and that can cause a pop of the balloon. So I'll just show you, if I can, that this tube has a broken balloon. So if I were to try to put water in the balloon, I'll probably be making a mess here, but you'll see some dripping water out. See when I'm putting in the water from here, it just drips out. Um, so yeah, that's an example of an ineffective balloon because it's broken and this tube would be at risk of just simply falling out. Even without being pulled, it could just fall out. Um, so that would be a tube that would need to be replaced. Um, so yeah, that's just some basic information about tube retention devices. If you're interested in this topic, stay tuned for more videos because I'm going to continue sort of a theme of uh, tube information. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.